Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Dragon70, a GM. Is this Melek? I think this is Melek Kachian, yeah. My friend GM Melek. Okay. So he's, uh, he's a guy I've taught with before at camps in the past, and an all-around very likable Grandmaster. Don't think I played him in the, in the pool on uh, ICC before, so this should be a new experience. Let's just go knight c6. I don't really know much about this system. I know it's symmetrical, and I know black is supposed to be completely fine. <laughs> but that's about it. I somehow got into like a Grunfeld position from this. Okay, knight c3. Hmm. I assume just bishop f5 is a fine move. If queen b3, I can play knight a5. Yeah, so he's going to be trying to occupy the c5 square, but now I have ideas of playing e5 and breaking free. So I think black's position is completely fine. Maybe he should try to arrange e4 now. Does that instead. Hmm. So is he waiting for me to play e5 so he can take and then plunk his bishop on d4, I wonder? Probably is. Yeah, but this move is so natural, it's hard to believe it's not good. Hmm, doesn't take it. Okay, just attacks my c6 pawn. That is a little annoying. It's a tiny bit annoying. Yeah. Maybe queen a5 last move was more accurate. Because now if rook c8, he might be able to take, and my a7 pawn is going to be hanging. Hmm. Still doesn't seem like a big problem. It shouldn't be. But maybe... Okay, I'll do this. So now if he takes on c6, I can take on a4. And... I'm thinking I have bishop d7 then. But I'm just looking like maybe he can take on uh, b6 now. And then try to grab on c6. This could get interesting. Knight c4, maybe? Hmm. Yeah, I've, I've created problems for myself now. Don't like this. I'm having to burn a lot of time, too. All right, I'm just going to take on e5. I think he's going to come out ahead, though, like after a capture on b6. Oh, no, he's playing it safe. He's playing it pretty safe. Let's take... Rook e8 I can play. Seems okay. Yeah, he's playing normal moves. He's not trying for too much. Alright, well, I thought there were ways he could have pressured me in that, in that sequence. But now the position is stabilized a little bit. So... Maybe he's a tiny bit better, just based on the pawn structure. But uh, I, my position looks very defensible at this point. I'll try to trade queens. Me 
you do trade queens. Try to get my king to the center. D6 looks like a good home for that piece. I have a lot of pawns on light squares. It's kind of annoying. And I have a few weak points, a7 and c6. But if I can get my king to d6, I stabilize things. The only problem are that there's some pawn breaks he might be able to organize, especially e4 that I want to watch out for. e4 could be putting a damper on things, but I think I'm OK. Like now if he plays e4, I think I can go king d6. Hmm. Huh. Skaruki seven. Just to put another defender on the second rank. Or seventh rank, I mean. I'm solid now. I'm very solid. I just can't do very much. Solid, but can't do very much. But neither can he. <laughs> he can't do much of anything either. Just go here. I can hold out with my bishop there. We'll go g5 next. Get more pawns off of light squares. If king h4, I have rook h7 check. So that's good. Let's try to bring our rook over and attack now. He might have over, overstepped the mark a little bit. Hmm. Check. Hmm. This looks like a good move. Okay, now my bishop defends here. It's nice. This bishop's really good here. This a4 pawn's hanging. I have checks. Yeah, this is great for me. Definitely out of the woods now. Okay, against that. Check. I think I can check. Um, check, check here. This should be winning. Check. Yeah, this is winning. One apiece. He resigned. All right, well, I kind of um, was able to outplay him a little bit in the complications. Let's go back. So by transposition, we got into a line of uh, the Grunfeld with 95. And White's only advantage in this variation is that he can try to occupy the c5 square. And I played to prevent that with knight d7. I bet this is some sort of theory, this position. And I think here I should have played queen a5. Main reason being, if he goes rook c1 now, I can play queen b5 and guard the, the c pawn that way. As played, I played this pawn break move e5, 
However, after rook c1, I don't have a really good way to defend this pawn, I don't think. Because queen c7 would run into bishop takes d5, exploiting the pin. Um, rook c8 would be the most natural move, perhaps. But after takes, he's threatening the pawn on a7. And I don't think that pawn is poisoned. I think, like, let's say this, he probably could just get away with taking it. I mean, if I go back, he's he can just play something like that, and his queen defends the knight, so this is fine for him. At least I think so. Unless I have some weird shot like knight d3, but I doubt it. So let's see what the engine thinks about this position. Yeah, queen a5. e5, maybe slightly inaccurate, yeah. Oh, queen f6, I didn't see queen f6. Okay, defending that way. Still, though, it thinks the small-edged white. Take, knight takes, bishop d4. Yeah. I could see why these positions um, just bring white a small advantage because he has less pawn islands. I have two pawns in the center, kind of like hanging pawn structure. He has easy pressure, good squares for his pieces. Knight jumping into c5. Way easier position for him to play. But yeah, I wish I would have played knight, uh, queen a5. That would have been better. I was surprised. I think if he would have spent a little more time, he might have found something more testing around here. Okay, so the engine says rook takes c6 is interesting. That's probably because it wants to sacrifice the exchange. So my idea was this. Then it says he can take here and preserve some advantage. So if take, take with the bishop. Those are some powerful bishops. Rook c8, ah, and bishop c5. Maybe he doesn't even lose material. Maybe he gets back... Uh, the exchange. Because if bishop d6, rook d1 looks good. Okay. Interesting line. Yeah, I, my position just didn't feel completely secure. Like, there's a lot of stuff up in the air, especially my c6 pawn. But he preferred to kind of just play sensibly. Maybe, maybe that was fine, like, given the time situation. He's already almost ahead two minutes at this point. So he might have been thinking, like, well... John's sitting there trying to figure out how to hold his pawns together. I'm just going to play quick moves, and maybe I don't get a huge advantage, but I'm, I'm probably a bit better no matter what. So that was just a practical decision by him, I think. And I'm a little bit worse. I think black can draw this ending. There's just some suffering in store. Again, because of the pawn structure and my slightly worse bishop. I have a lot of pawns in the same color as my bishop, and that's why I'm worse. That's why later I wanted to go f6 and g5. And I was able to do that. The king coming to d7 helps me. I thought if he wanted to, he should yeah, try to play e4 and break up my center structure. Because later on, I think he was trying to organize e4, but he never got a chance to play that move. So e4 here would have been decent while my king is blocking my rook. And if this happens, let's say... He's making some progress. Like, now I can't easily park my king on d6 because I always have to worry about checks on the d-file. And c6 becomes weaker. His bishop is now attacking that, too. Because as played, he wasn't able to alter the pawn structure to his advantage. I think the tide started turning when later I was able to find that d4 move. That move was key. He's still better as we're approaching some time pressure. Yeah, f6 and g5. This was a nice idea to get in. So it seems like, yeah, b5 would have been a, a good option around here. I was wondering if he could play that move. Exploiting the pin on my rook. I can't capture. He just takes my rook in that case. I guess the reason why this is uncomfortable for black is he might play a4, a5 if I just sit here and try to wait for him to exchange. So the computer might be indicating that I can't do that. Yeah, b5 right now would have put me under a lot of pressure. He just waited too long. And now rook h7 and I've got great play. Check. Yeah, d4. This was a strong move because I don't want to have to take on b4 with my rook. Because then he takes on c6. Check. He's in the driver's seat again. Meanwhile, he's threatening a5, and my rook will have to do something. He won't be able to stay guarding this pawn. But d4, finally allowing the bishop to uh, defend the pawn. 
And now I have a clear initiative. Looks like he might be almost losing. Yeah, I took. Check. Check. Yeah, and check. the sequence is just winning. When I first looked at this sequence a couple moves prior, I, I saw that I could do this and then grab the pawn on a4, which also looked very good. But when this was played over the board, Check. I realized rook b2 was winning. And if he goes rook c2, I Check. have this move and win the rook. So that's... Oh, actually, oh, he has bishop e2. Uh, I didn't see bishop e2. But still, looks great for black. Computer says rook b4, go after his weak pawns. Yeah, my bishop is dominating his bishop now. But instead, he he played this, and Check. then I take, and I'm up a piece, winning. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that game against GM Melek. And please feel free to leave me any feedback in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys.